in this video we're going to look at the uh, 555 timer. I forgot to write it in the uh, square there, but uh, this represents a 555 timer. This is old sheet that I'm reusing. It is in a stable mode. What that means is we just have one LED here. We could also add another LED that comes from the uh, positive supply, but uh, in any case, the LED is going to flash on and off. It's going to do that continuously. That's what a stable means. It's not on or off until you do something. It just keeps bouncing back and forth on and off. The way that you set how long it is on and off works with uh, these two resistors, the diode and the capacitor. So to begin with, the capacitor we assume is discharged when you turn the uh, power on and so current has to go through that resistor. Now we also have a diode here because we want to make it so we're not going through two resistors. We can go through two resistors, that's just fine, but uh, to even out the timing we're going to go through a diode and that charges the capacitor. So you basically have the RC time constant going through the uh, resistor and capacitor to charge it up, it takes time. The value of the capacitor, the larger it is, the longer it takes, the larger the resistance, the larger it takes. So you can balance those out. Since we might go up to uh, 12 volts with this, I'm gonna use one kilo ohm resistors as a minimum. So in any case, capacitor charges. While it is charging, the output is high. When the capacitor gets to two thirds supply voltage, that uh, pin 6 senses. It discharges through the resistor. This is a discharge pin. So that connects to ground. We'll look at that later on. In any case, it discharges through a resistor because it cannot go through the LED. It discharges till it gets to one third of the supply voltage. That's what pin 2 detects. Once it hits uh, one third supply voltage, then the uh, pin number 2 senses that. Pin 7 stops discharging, it becomes like an open switch, it's as if it doesn't exist really. The output goes high and the capacitor goes back to charging. So it keeps bouncing back and forth between two third and one third supply voltage and the output keeps uh, bouncing high or low. So now here is the pin layout. We have to power the integrated circuit and uh, positive supply goes to 8. The uh, negative supply ground, 0 volt reference point, whatever you want to call it goes to pin 1 and then we also have to deal with the reset pin so as you can see pin number 8 to the positive supply it's over there hidden now uh, and then pin number 1 the top left pin there to ground we have pin number 4 here the reset pin directly to the positive rail it is waiting for a low input somewhere below half of the supply voltage we could go directly to negative rail, whatever. That's what it's waiting for. So if we keep it to the VCC, the positive supply, the uh, pin will not do anything. That's what we want. We don't want the 555 timer to reset. That overrides anything else that's going on. So now let's get the timing out of the way. We're going to take a 1 kilo ohm, 1000 ohm resistor right here, put it to the positive rail, and then to pin 7. It's going to get a little crowded here. So I'm going to stay as close to the rail as possible. So we are to pin 7. We got that resistor out of the way. Sometimes that's discharging. It's going to ground, going to the negative rail. And sometimes it's just off. It's not doing anything. And so we want to make sure we have resistance because it does connect directly to ground at times. Now, which would be uh, if we went directly from the positive rail to ground, it's a short circuit. So we've got to have at least some resistance. So now we got the other resistor. That's going from pin 7 to pin uh, 6. So right now, as we have it, the capacitor would charge through two resistors and then discharge through one. We're going to add a diode later to uh, fix that to even out the timing. It won't be perfectly even, but it will be closer. In any case, as I said, we're going to charge the uh, 1000 microfarad capacitor. So this is probably about as large of a value we use. You can go as low as you want. Uh, and then you might have to use less resistance though to uh, balance the uh, time to what you want. But in any case, this side has to be more negative. And uh, so I'm gonna put that 
right where the two or where the resistor goes to a pin six right there I should say so as I said it's getting a little crowded there we don't want to in this video charge through two resistors again perfectly fine it'll just take twice as long to charge as discharge the output will be high twice as long as it will be low uh, if that's what you want that's perfectly fine so we have a rectifier down here this is the uh, 1N4001 it's commonly included in kits and whatnot so you probably have one if you have any electronics components at all so we have to make sure that it's forward biased while the capacitor is charging so we're gonna put the black stripe or the uh, gray stripe I mean it's a black body a uh, gray stripe to the capacitor so that it can charge that way but not discharge and uh, so we have that there uh, pretty simple now we have pin 6 and pin 2 monitoring the same voltage they don't let any current in or out of them they're just looking at the voltage there's you know leakage and stuff so if you want to get real technical a tiny bit of current is slipping through but uh, practically nothing so I'm just gonna take this little jumper I made pin 2 that's the trigger pin and then the threshold pin we got them tied together now they're both looking at the same voltage pretty straightforward now this video that's that's it uh, for wiring of the circuitry we just have our load here so that we can kinda see what's going on as long as we know what's happening electrically we can tell a lot by seeing what the LED is doing so we got pin 4 directly to the positive rail so it doesn't do anything I already covered that we covered these components so now let's get to the output so I may go to uh, 12 volts in this video and so one kilo ohm resistor will be uh, our minimum value there and green LEDs are naturally brighter and I actually have them in the uh, order that you see on here sometimes I swap the uh, order that the resistor and the LED go and uh, if a schematic diagram you got series components that don't match up a lot of times you can just swap which one comes before the other in the circuit so I'm gonna move that there I gotta go one spot away from the gray jumper so I'm going to pin three up there third pin down leaving a spot to the negative rail for the LED I should probably use a green LED it'll be brighter with the uh, one kilo ohm right there so actually it lets less current through because it blocks more voltage and it's brighter than a red LED so topics for other videos I mentioned that a lot so there we go unless I mess something up we should be uh, perfectly well wired and uh, let's get the light out of the way there so we have five volts now all I have to do is turn the uh, power on and uh, there you go we have a flashing LED so it stayed high for a little bit because we went from zero volts to two-thirds supply voltage now we're just going down to one-third two-thirds so initially it's on just slightly bit longer then it's off some 555 timer circuits we got this uh, sudden changes in current uh, rapid changes and we're monitoring two-thirds and one-third of the supply voltage so under certain circumstances the power supply might not hold that 5 volts terribly steady and it may influence the output you can just take a capacitor and uh, 100 ferrets should work fine I don't think I don't know what the lowest value is but I don't think you have to be uh, very high value you just put that directly to the rail and it smooths things out and uh, so whatever the power supply kind of dips in voltage because you got a sudden uh, need for more current the uh, capacitor can provide that extra current for a little while so you may need that you may not now as I said before if we use smaller value components and uh, before I do that actually let's go up to uh, 12 volts so I have current limited to 20 mil milliamps with this power supply and also in case you don't watch my other videos I just take the alligator clips from this power supply clip them to jumpers put those jumpers to the rail and then I got other jumpers going to the other rail I'll get this uh, blue one out of the way so we can just put this up to 12 volts the main thing is now the the LED should get brighter but also that's one reason why we're using one kilo ohm so we can go up to 12 volts watch the uh, timing so 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 we have twice uh, the voltage the timing may have changed a bit but for the most part 
it's the about the same. It's turning on and off about, about once a second, it looks like. So, at 12 volts. So we can go back to a 5 volts. Let's go to a 3 volts. And uh, stop flashing at 2. Oh, we need at least 4. So we have enough voltage to get the LED to light up. But there you can see, 4 volts. The LED is flashing about the same speed as a 12. So now, it's brighter there. That's all the more voltage is doing. We, we set the timing. It's mostly independent of voltage so not not perfect but for the most part now what we can do is we could use higher value resistors or what might be uh, I probably should turn the power off what might be a little more acceptable I'm gonna make sure and discharge this capacitor before I put it to the uh, rail we may see a spark because it was 12 volts so make sure that sides uh, on the more positive so that's going to the diode and the uh, resistor and there we go. Oops, I'm off a spot. I went to pin 5. So hopefully that didn't damage anything. There you go. It's easy to uh, put the wrong spot. So we're getting sudden uh, surges in current. And uh, we can probably actually improve that with uh, this capacitor now. I'm going to put it to the rail like I did the uh, other one right there and there you can see our uh, surges in current went away the uh, capacitors providing the uh, current to hold the uh, voltage when needed when you get sudden demand but in case we have one tenth of the capacitance that's probably flashing probably pretty close to exactly ten times faster so there's uh these aren't uh, perfect their values they have a tolerance that can be maybe ten maybe twenty percent off or whatever they're not precision and uh, but in any case, this is about one tenth the capacitance of that one, so it's flashing about ten times faster. Now, another thing that uh, I think I'll show is, uh, and now we're back to the power supply being unstable, providing unstable power, but you can't really uh, tell. That's also we we limited the current. If we raised it, probably we won't have that problem. So now what we're going to do? Let's pluck the uh, green LED right now and uh, replace it with the red LED. Less bright, less obnoxious, right there. We can keep an eye on what's going on. So, right now we're sourcing the current. We're going, the output is, when the output's more positive, going through the protective resistor, the LED again, make sure the long lead the anodes towards the more positive side, short lead the cathodes towards the more negative side. It's sourcing the current when the LED lights up. I'm gonna grab another LED. I got this jumper here to the positive rail, and I uh, put the long lead, of course, where it goes positive. Short lead is down to a blank roll. There's nothing on that roll right there. And uh, I don't think this LED will be in the way really. But uh, I'm going to grab another 1 kilo ohm resistor. Again, we're working with 12 volts. And uh, there we go. So now they're alternating which one is flashing. Now they're both rapidly flashing. So what we're going to do, pluck that resistor. Again, we should turn the power off before I do this. This time I'm going to make sure I get to where the resistor and the LED are. I'm going to look a little closer. There we go. So now, we have the flash off so you can see that uh, the current limit we set is uh, providing a problem. So there we go. We raised the current limit. We fixed that problem, but also to uh, smooth things out, we can just take the uh, capacitor here make sure we got the right polarity and so you saw kind of needed a surge of current to charge the capacitor but now it's steady so if the capacitor was in there the whole time we wouldn't have that problem so now we can go down to uh, two and uh, yeah now it looks like we're uh, demanding too much because we got this larger capacitor so we would need a larger capacitor but we can just up the uh, current of the uh, supply so in any case I went over a lot of stuff. It's not a terribly complex uh, circuit. It's used all the time. You can find schematics of the A-stable multi-vibrator all over the place. And at some point here, I'm going to pop up some other videos and stuff. Make sure you check those out. I don't know how much longer I'm going to talk, but uh, that'll be the last 20 seconds. You'll see other videos, the subscribe button and whatnot. Make sure uh, you check those out. And uh, in any case, the uh, 555 timer all kinds of uh, the modes whatever there's all kinds of circuits out there and so 
once you learn the basic circuits, you're just kind of adding. You can add sensors to the input or whatnot. And uh, I did video with light dependent resistor setting how fast the LEDs flash and all that. There's all kinds of modifications you can make. So once you have the basic circuitry down, all you have to focus on is the modifications. See how they alter it and it makes it really easy to understand. It's a lot harder to try to learn the F555 timer with all kinds of alterations to it. Focus on these uh, basic videos and work your way up and I think you'll have a lot of fun uh, doing it. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. I will see you in the next video.